Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, I want to encourage you to stop waiting for permission. This was a lesson that I had to learn um, on the weight loss journey. Actually, I've relearned this lesson many times since then. Um, But I had this tendency before this to kind of wait for someone to give me permission to do the thing that I wanted to do anyway. And the most clear example uh, from my own journey is when I finally decided to write my own plan to make up my own rules for how I was going to lose weight. And the reason I I even had this thought was because I read a book and and it just it changed my perspective on things. It was called The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. Um I was a big uh fan of his uh from his other book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which also changed my life and it led to a lot of other things that I ended up doing <laughs> later on uh in my life, but But the point is, when I read that book, and I know it sounds silly maybe to some of you out there, but before that, I really, it didn't occur to me that you could just make up your own rules for your your own plan to lose weight and and just do that thing. In my mind, it was always like, well, you have to find a book that, you know, like written by some doctor or nutritionist or something, and and then you got to follow it to the letter. You you have to be perfect on that plan. And and then if you, if you fall off that plan at all, then, you know, basically you're a failure. And, uh, and in, in the four hour body, uh, I, I, it wasn't so much what he talked about specifically as his plan. He likes the uh, slow carb diet, but um, he actually talked about this other guy who created his own plan called like the Shangri-La diet. And it was just this guy made this plan up. Um, Like, I think he was just eating really bland food (laughs) and, and he like kind of came up with his own theory that like, oh, well, the reason why he was able to lose weight was he was eating this really bland food for a while and it like kind of reset his taste buds. I mean, it kind of sounds bizarre now when, when I when I tell that, but it just changed my perspective. He was just a, a, a normal guy and just had a hypothesis on what might work for him. And he, and he lost weight doing it his way. Um, like the Shangri-La diet, I actually tried for a couple of days. Like, I think um, if I remember correctly, you put like two tablespoons of water sugar into some water and you drink that maybe twice a day. Anyway, the point is when doing it, I realized like, okay, this is not the plan for me. I will, I will not do this plan for the rest of my life. But that experience, even though you might say, well, you failed on that diet. Well, yeah, maybe, but also it just changed my paradigm. I realized like, oh, I don't need somebody's permission to figure out some way to eat for myself. Like I can just figure out my own rules and follow my own plan. There is no gatekeeper. There is nothing that that says like you have to look to someone else for you know uh, a, a plan. You can create your own plan, and I I want to encourage you that I believe everyone should write their own plan, customize it exactly to their life, um, and and then follow that plan and and then tweak accordingly, because everybody has different lives and everybody has different schedules and different challenges. So I think it's really important to figure out what will work for you and then and then do that thing, no matter how much it may fly in the face of what other people are saying. Like, you know, during the time that I started, uh, you know, writing my own plan and do, doing that whole thing, the, the pervasive um, attitude was like no carbs like you, or, or that carbs are evil or whatever the thing was. And I just decided, like, I'm just not going to buy into all that. And I'm really glad that I didn't because it wouldn't have worked for me. Now, if you don't like carbs or if carbs make you feel bad, go for that. Like do do, do the plan, the high protein or the high fat or, or be a carnivore, whatever works for you. Um, But again, focus on what will work for you in your life, not what anybody else is saying. Another way this kind of manifested itself in my life was I realized so many times I was delaying action because I really just wanted to see like, do I, will, will it be okay if I do it this way? For example, um, 
uh, back in 2014, I thought, you know, maybe if I just ran three miles a day, like maybe that would be the thing that would um, help me lose weight, which didn't really work out. But you would not believe how much time I wasted uh, at, at that point when I thought, oh, maybe maybe three miles of running a day. I I would look online. I would uh, research it to death and spend hours, you know, looking at articles telling me, you know, how how many miles is it safe to run each day? Or do you have to take a rest day? Or how many rest days are you allowed to have? No one knows. That's the thing. Nobody knows. And if you think that somebody out there does know, I would encourage you uh, to to try to prove yourself wrong. Like, look at people who are like outliers, who who are doing way more uh, than than what you think may or may not be uh, okay to do. And and I think it's it it, it just kind of opens your eyes to things. Like, I read a book called born to run around that time. And, um, you know, before that book, I was running, you know, three miles and, and, and I wasn't very consistent with it because I was just kind of, well, a couple of different things were happening. One was, uh, I, I couldn't really tell if I was losing weight because I wasn't weighing myself because I was afraid to do that. So, uh, I didn't really know if I was making any progress on actually losing weight. Um, I also would just uh, be in a lot of pain because I was obese and running while I was obese. I mean, like I had a lot of knee pain. I had a uh, really bad, um, pain in my, uh, my art, the arch of my foot. I had really bad hip pain and I would still get out there and run because partly I was just kind of punishing myself. I just, you know, I, my self-talk was not good during that time. So then, you know, I, w- I was trying to figure out, you know, is is it because I'm running three miles a day? Maybe that's just too much. And then I read the book Born to Run by Chris McDougall. And that book just totally shifted my paradigm because he's talking about ultra marathoners and the Ta, Ta- Umara Indians. And they're, they're running like hundreds of miles. And it just it, it made me realize like so much of what we see, you know, all, all the different articles you'll read about on the internet written by, you know, some sort of expert or perceived expert, they'll, they'll say one thing and it, it sounds like, oh, well, that makes sense. But then when you go and look at other people who are blowing that theory out of the water, it, it can just kind of change your mind. But ultimately it comes down to really what, what will work for you? You know, like, um, even though I learned that lesson, I realized like, oh, wow, humans are actually capable of running a lot of miles daily, you know, it really just depends on what your perspective is. Um, even even though I, I learned that lesson, uh, when I started walking six miles a day, I went through that same process of like trying to figure out, you know, do the experts say that's too much walking? You know, like it was just this insane thing I was doing in hindsight. Like, why not just get out there and walk the six miles and see how you feel? And that's eventually what I did. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to get out here and I'm going to do it. And then if at any point I start to feel bad or I just don't want to do it anymore, then I'll, you know, make a new decision. And I would encourage you that you can always make a new decision. Um, You know, like so many times it feels like, well, once I start down this road, like, you know, I won't be able to, uh, to change it, but you can, you can always make changes. So, you know, there's all this like uh, pressure we put on ourselves to form the perfect plan, you know, and, and we just sit there in, in action. But instead, if you can just start taking action, just do the thing, like write down a plan you think will work for you and write down some sort of move, you know, exercise or movement that you want to do every day or however many times a week and write that down and then just experiment with it. And I think you'll find uh, that you make a lot more progress and the things you're wanting to make progress on. I do want to caution you that when you do try things, you're probably going to, you know, realize like, oh, this isn't working out quite right, but that's good. You 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 can learn from that and say, oh, okay, this thing isn't quite working, but you can make a tweak. But if you never, ever get out there and try it, you, you won't have anything to, to go on because you don't have data yet. I, uh realized that I was doing this to myself before I wrote my book, I was thinking, well, I got to wait until someone asks me to uh, write my book. Right. And I, I eventually did have someone ask, you know, like they weren't a publisher or anything. Uh, it was just, you know, somebody said, are, are you going to write a book? And so and that was like that little piece of permission that I needed to go out and do it. But 
I regret that I waited until that person said that. I should have just done it uh, when I felt like I wanted to write my book. You know, right now, if you're wanting to write a book and you're waiting for someone to come ask you to write a book, don't do that. Don't wait for somebody else's permission. That's giving other people power. But instead, you know, if you've got a book in you, write a book. If you want to start a business, start a business. Because the truth is, sometimes you might be waiting forever on other people's permission. uh, And maybe you'll never get asked to do that. Nobody asked me to upload my first YouTube video, <laughs> and I'm super glad I did that now because it, it's helped people. You know, they, they've said it's helped them. Now, I mean, like, I'm, I'm thrilled that putting that out there helps some people, and I'm not trying to, like, brag or anything, but I'm just trying to point out, like, you can either sit there and wait and not do the thing that you think you want to do, or you can take action and get out there and, and do the thing. And When I look back on all these different little points in my life where I've actually just not waited for permission and gone out and taken action, that's when I've had the best results. So I would encourage you right now, whatever it is that you feel like you're just kind of waiting for permission to do the thing, go out there and do it. Thank you for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes. And if you've gotten value from this podcast and you'd like to let other people know about it, it'd be great if you could leave a review on either iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks.